all right welcome in honeyland gamers zub zub to you now 2024 has already been a banner year for the honeyland team and project we have seen uh, a significant increase in the release of features since the gen z experience has been fine-tuned to the point where the team is confident that they'll be able to uh, increase the daily and monthly active users which of course we have uh, seen evidence of this happening already given the uh, of course increasing busyness levels i'll say of the lands where uh, bees are hunting and harvesting uh, and as well uh, the team has hard data that they share during amas uh, related to the daily and monthly active users so with that uh, it becomes even more important to be a more efficient beekeeper and from my perspective this is one of the areas in which new players and players with small hives are uh, slightly lacking and that's not because uh, of any failure on their part it's because there's so much uh, information uh, and gameplay mechanics to digest that it, it really does become uh, challenging to not only build your hive while learning the new information that you're exposed to, but also at the same time remain very productive uh, with your active gameplay. So what we're gonna do today uh, and uh, over the next week or so in this series that I'm putting together which is dedicated uh, to accounts with around 25 bees. Uh, the Honeyland Tutor account is uh, level 16, which is very modest uh, in terms of how many lands I can occupy and how many bees I can send to each land. Uh, so this should give you uh, a, a fairly realistic perspective on what a experienced high level player considers to be some best practices uh, for our, our newer gamers uh, and e growing uh, hive keepers. So with that, we'll begin with a couple of not gameplay related topics. We're going to start off with uh, knowing your bees and we'll essentially spend some time uh, not really playing too much really uh, which may seem a bit counterintuitive to to you the viewer however with a game such as this from my perspective the more prepared you are the the better your knowledge base and of course the better you know your bees the better off you're gonna be in your gameplay right so Again, from my perspective, it's actually quite important to do your homework given uh, the, the stakes uh, th that are quite high considering the uh, potential to earn rewards as well as in the long term to set yourself up uh, in a position to capitalize on the Universe 2 release, which is hopefully coming in uh, a couple of months as well as any subsequent universe releases uh, and capitalize on the honey rush that will ensue. Now, we're not gonna talk too much about uh, you know preparing for universe two right now. However, it, again, from my perspective, this work that you do in the beginning of your career as a, a beekeeper will truly snowball and allow you to become even more productive and and thrive even more greatly uh, than you are at this point which if you have 25 bees then you're doing quite well uh, particularly if you started with 10 or less bees and you've organically grown your way through hunting as well as harvesting and, and perhaps using some of those uh, harvest yields to purchase some bees from the marketplace essentially turning your earned honey into a productive asset that will obviously have value and be able to increase your uh, ability to collect rewards. So with that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start on the hive mind, 
which will allow us to really dig deeply into the quality landform zone capabilities as well as uh, set up some like matching for our uh, bees and depending on whether you like the hive mind interface or the in-game interface you'll be able to build squads which will allow you to more easily uh, deploy your bees and of course easy is one of those words that really if something is easier than it used to be you're becoming more efficient you're becoming better you're uh, encountering less obstacles or you're uh, handling those obstacles in a, a much more effective manner so really what can be said is that folks that don't utilize the tools that are provided to them are not going to thrive as mightily as those who do use the tools provided to them. So we're going to begin from the HiveMind homepage. Uh, and as you can see here, there's a button called Export Hive, which we're going to go ahead and click and it will download for us a comma separated value spreadsheet that will allow us to uh, visually inspect all of our bee statistics in, in one eye shot. Now, this is important, uh, particularly for those who have large and growing hives, because it can be quite overwhelming if you're attempting to make some sense of bees that have been added to your roster in large groups and you haven't necessarily been able to break down how they work well with each other you've essentially been uh doing something that we most of us do which is it's pretty much just sorting your bees by endurance going up and then perhaps using the likes filter to make like groups and send those out together but perhaps you really don't uh, completely understand and haven't dove very deeply into exactly how you can optimize your squads and essentially increase your productivity. All right, so when you download the, uh, the, the CSV file, it's going to give you a bunch of information that you're not necessarily interested in or that is uh, essentially worthless. Uh, it's stored uh, for other purposes. However, for the, uh, the player, there are a lot of things that we can get rid of first. Pretty much everything after the, the state column, uh, essentially, and this image column can go. Uh, and, and for me, I like to uh, you know, fully clean and reorganize the data to make it a, a little bit more intuitive. Uh, and this is the result, right? So you can see that uh, there's the ID number, the mood, specialty, etc., total stats, and working our way through. Uh, and we we keep all of the relevant information uh, available for us to see at a glance. Now, as somebody who is you know pretty experienced with uh, you know spreadsheets, I take a step further. I like to have as much information as possible when I do happen to dive back into my hive and see if I need to uh, make any adjustments to the way that I've been uh, essentially performing my gameplay mechanics, which in the beginning of my career was one of my keys to success. It was what helped me to be most efficient, use the correct bees for hunting, use the correct bees for harvesting, and of course uh, remain able to cycle my bees as fast as possible. So uh, a result of what that effort is going to look like is, is something like this. Right, you can you can pretty obviously see that it, it's it's actually, from my perspective, it's it's really nice to look at at this point. There are visual cues that help us interpret without having to do too much actual reorganization that let us know how our hive is composed. Right, you it, just without having to do any counting, we can pretty easily tell that the most common landform in the Honeyland Tudor's hive is meadows, right? There are obviously a, a good number of woodland bees, good number of no specialty bees, and none of the other landforms. As well, you can tell 
given the way that I've done some of the form formatting, that these bees are all able to go to zone three or above, which is to say that there's no reason for the Honeyland Tutor account to ever look at any lands in zone one or two, not just because all our bees can go to higher zones, but because the lands themselves are not as productive and drop honey pots less frequently. So now I understand that not everybody's going to have the time or, uh, you know, predilection to do this type of manipulations to uh, a, a spreadsheet or, or perhaps, uh, you know, wouldn't want to anyway even if they were, uh, you know, as comfortable with spreadsheets as I am. However, at the very least, when you, you have your, your data in this format, you can, you can get a pretty good idea for what's going on. Now, one of the really beneficial things to doing it the way I do it is that I am able to include the max HXD formula, which is designed by Zelix, uh, a consultant for the team, that allows me to easily, extremely easily determine which of my bees are going to be best for harvesting. This is what we refer to as the bee analysis, and it uses a formula provided by the, the team and the developers that takes agility, capacity, and recovery into account to determine the maximum amount of unboosted harvesting yields that a bee would be able to acquire if their missions were completed in the minimum amount of time. So essentially what we're saying is that not all bees are good for harvesting while they all can perform the harvesting mission there are definitely bees that are better at harvesting now if you'll take note this bee at the top here with the highest max hxd figure is actually a no specialty bee so if i sent a meadow bee to a meadow and the no specialty bee to the meadow without a para paradise maker being on the land, the meadow bee would complete its mission much more quickly because of the landform match it would be getting from being on a meadow, right? So that's why I mentioned that this is an unboosted productivity figure that is based on the bee completing its mission in the minimum time. Once you get in game, it becomes really important to do things that are at this point in your career quite straightforward, like landform matching. However, it also shows you that this bee that you thought might not have been a good harvester actually is a good harvester under the right circumstances. And, you know, I, I can sort of hear you saying, hey, well, this bee can go to zone seven, which would give it this figure here. And this bee can only go to zone three, which would give it this figure here. And that really is one of the main points is that endurance still remains king as far as harvesting is concerned. And this, type of spreadsheet setup that allows you to visualize all these things at the same time truly empowers your ability to maximize your productivity and thrive as a growing beekeeper who of course also wants to harvest while they're growing which growing your hive is really a function of efficient hunting right so Ultimately, what we're talking about here is that you need to know your bees top to bottom, back to front, in order to grow 
quickly organically without having to use too many of your outside resources uh, now with that we'll go uh, we'll go ahead and we'll sort of move to the next bit of this discussion which is to identify appropriate hunting bees harvesting bees and design some groups some squads that make sense that can be implemented on hive mind or in game and al allow us to as mentioned in the beginning most efficiently deploy our, our resources uh, which uh, essentially save us time uh, and as we know of course time is money with that We'll, uh, we'll slightly rearrange the uh, bees based on their endurance, which as uh, mentioned, of course, is the most important uh, factor given that it allows your bees to uh, harvest in increasing percentages of their maximum capacity, which is obviously reduced by zone as you move downwards uh, of course i was very purposeful in uh sending penguinitos bees to the honeyland account in order to uh sort of show exemplify the the merits of building your hive properly this group of three zone seven meadow bees with matching likes isn't necessarily the easiest thing to put together however it, it will become obvious how worth the effort it was for you to attempt to do this type of organizational trading or whatever the case purchasing if you know if you so choose to purchase some bees so what we'll uh, ultimately do uh, is pretty much say as a rule if we're going to be performing active harvesting, these three bees will always go harvesting together under any set of circumstances. There is truly nothing that I can imagine in terms of routine gameplay that would make me not send these three bees out together not only are they able to reach the second highest level uh, as far as capacitating percentages are concerned with the tiered having they're also going to boost each other's capacity up a bonus 30 percent because that's what happens when you match three bees on a mission with the same like and we'll go ahead and we'll show you an example of that right now uh, we're going to go to a, a zone seven meadow there are only two of them and we'll discuss more uh, the importance of knowing that there are only two zone seven meadows in the whole universe right that's the, one of the next topics that we'll discuss uh it, knowing the lands right using your favorites knowing the landowners being able to predict that a given land won't be occupied by its landowner etc right those types of things are actually quite important but they're a little advanced uh, and we'll, we'll move to that uh, in a later video. So with that, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll pull open the game. We'll jump right into the universe screen and we'll go directly to where we know the two zone seven lands are. <clears throat> now, one of them is owned by Zelix himself uh, and the other one is unowned. So as you can tell, there is it's pretty obvious which one is a better land to send our bees to and this makes it pretty easy we're gonna go ahead and send our three zone seven meadow bees to this land now what you can see here is that the capacity of these three bees of course is very high these this level of capacity it is essentially equivalent to what penguinitos bees get when they go out on missions right so i'm showing you 
that this level 16 account with 25 bees, these three bees are as productive, if not more productive, than 60 or 70 percent of my you know, primary account, right? That really the only account that I actually play. And that is something that people don't necessarily understand the, the weight of, right? Obviously, most folks understand that capacity is what allows them to bring back more honey. However, being smart about where and which bees you send really has more impact than just having purely high statistics as well. Uh, this the factor that I hadn't really mentioned during this video, which I mention a lot in my tutorial video series, is the power of a, a Gen 1 level 20 queen, right? This queen is passing along 40% of these stats to the bee directly, which of course goes into the formula for the end result of the boosted statistics so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and send these bees and we'll provide the update on what their rewards were in a future video now if you're really looking if you're really really interested in maximizing the productivity of your most productive bees, there's something else that you can do that will ensure that you are able to bring in the highest value of rewards for these three bees. And as silly as it might seem for me to, for me to do this, really it makes sense once you start thinking about it. So the way the game works, is these three bees have currently a 30% boost, all three of them. However, when the first bee drops off, these two remaining bees will have a reduction in the boost. Not only will they have a reduction in the boost provided by the like matching, they will also have a reduction in the boost provided by there being three mood matching bees, right? So if what we are interested in is bringing in the most honey during each of our missions, which is personally what I'm most interested in, then we can send this non landform matching bee to the land with our, our three studly ASMR bees and it is guaranteed to finish slower because our meadow bees will be based off their agility collecting honey much more quickly than this woodland bee. So what we're saying is that when the first ASMR bee drops off which is going to be one, four, eight, four, five, six. It's got the highest agility. It's tied with this one and the lowest capacity, right? So when this bee drops off the land, we're still going to get the three B mood boost, which will increase the overall rewards that the other two bees were able to bring in rather than having them both go down to a 2x boost they're still at least going to have the 3x boost from the mood match and while i do cover this in some of my early tutorial harvesting videos it becomes even more important when we're talking about this triple capacity boost because when you drop the th when the third b drops off the mission you're not just losing one boost, you're losing two boosts, right? So this is sort of a, a, a strategy that I personally employ. Generally speaking, while it's best to have three Bs on a mission because you'll get that three X mood boost, it's actually 
better to have a fourth B that takes a little bit longer time to complete if your goal is to maximize the total amount of honey that you bring in. And that's because from what I have experienced, the few minutes that this bee might be finished its harvesting mission more quickly on a different land doesn't really translate into higher productivity. Because at the end of the day, you're not going to be sending the bee out by itself. You're going to be waiting for it to have at least two other buddies so that it can get that 3x mood boost. So uh, it, it's a, a little bit of splitting hairs here. But from my perspective, most players aren't going to be playing 24-7 and constantly sending their bees out which would make it to where they're more interested in having bees finish more quickly so that they can send them back out. From what I can tell, more players are doing three to four logins a day. They're sending their bees out as many times as they can a, a day, of course. However, there, there truly aren't uh, a, a disproportionate amount of users that are spending what we'll say 18 hours a day, really, uh, maybe 18 to 20 hours a day, depending on <laughs> your, you know, your D-Gen lifestyle, uh, the folks that aren't spending really 18 to 20 hours playing a day. Uh, so that that is really what we're going to end our first uh, video in this series with, is th we're just going to hammer home the fact that you need to understand your bees and know that certain things that might not have been intuitive change and make more sense as your hive grows and you have more interactions among your bees. You're sending groups of landform matching bees specifically to their landform now when you may have been using a meadow bee to hunt in the large desert area which usually has hunting availability, but now you want to, or perhaps now you have uh, a several partners for a B in terms of like matches, right? So your gameplay experience is gonna evolve as you continue to grow, uh, and it's important for you to grow alongside it. So with that, we'll go ahead and send this, this gentleman out uh, as the anchor for this 3X double match right so the, the really what we we got is a triple double here and we want uh, to make sure that our triple doublers are empowered to be as productive as possible all right so uh what we got is a, a nice long intro video here for you we're gonna go ahead and uh cut this one off and we'll move to the uh in next video in the series which will likely be a little bit shorter we'll discuss how to, to build squads based around likes and landforms uh, and, and that should be a, a good one as well so uh, with that uh, a hearty zub zub to you thank you for tuning in uh, and if you have any questions please join us in the discord uh, of course I am Penguinito however uh, there are a, a plethora of members mods and the team that are always ready willing and able to uh you know give you the information that you need as long as it's not the uh the answer to the zeely quests because uh that is not allowed have a great day have a great evening and we'll see you soon bye bye